Mesut Ozil released a statement with the headline being, quote, it is with a heavy heart and after much consideration that because of recent events, I will no longer be playing for Germany at the international level, whilst I have this feeling of racism and disrespect. I used to wear the German shirt with such pride and excitement, but now I don't. So for now, you won't be seeing Ozil playing for a shaft. What up? I'm Adrian, this is Rabona TV, and today we'll be going through the reasons as to why Mesut Ozil won't be playing for Germany for now. I honestly didn't intend to have two videos in a row about players not playing for their national teams, but hey, we'll go with it. By the way, if you're finding us for the first time and enjoy explainers like this, player bios, timely news, FIFA content, etc., then do consider hitting that subscribe button. It's appreciated. Now, Mr. Dozil has had no shortage of detractors throughout his career, most commonly during his time with Arsenal, where some of the fan base see him as brilliant, while others see him as a lazy player with a flash of brilliance now and then. Given the unique vocality of the Arsenal fans, The guy's so f***ing lazy, he's walking around like he don't give a f Mesut no doubt has had to learn to take criticism from both the public and the media, as he noted in a statement. He went on to say, quote, Many applaud and many criticize. If a newspaper or a pundit finds fault in a game I play in, then I can accept this. I'm not a perfect footballer, and this often motivated me to work and train harder. Standard, par for the course kind of stuff. To make it at the top, a footballer has to be both talented and mentally strong. But where things start to go awry in Ozil's case is down to the picture he took with Recep Tayyip Erdogan alongside Ilke Gundogan, and the German media didn't like that. I should say, parts of the German media didn't like that. Now, who is Erdogan, what exactly happened, and why was this such a big deal? Recep Tayyip Erdogan is the current president of Turkey, and is seen as a controversial figure. When Ozil and Gundogan took the picture alongside Erdogan in mid-May of 2018, the Turkish president was visiting England at an event that Ozil says was both, quote, educational and charitable. Erdogan was in England on a three-day trip where he was to meet with Queen Elizabeth and Theresa May. The reason as to why he was on this tour is down to the Turkish general elections, which were taking place about a month later, as Erdogan needed to drum up support from Britain and countries in the EU. Well, from Turkish immigrants in Britain and the countries in the EU. So, media from around the world, most notably in Germany, saw this as these players co-signing for Erdogan, supporting him, and providing him with propaganda, as some Twitter users such as this one put it. Now, full disclosure here, I don't follow Turkish politics closely enough to have an opinion on Erdogan, but from my research, he's not particularly popular outside of Turkey, with some foreign media companies referring to him as a dictator. The fact that Erdogan is pushing a referendum to reintroduce the death penalty in Turkey, which hasn't been used officially in 33 years, doesn't seem to help him in regards to how he's been viewed. Now, in Germany, they recently introduced a law that disallowed non-EU politicians to campaign in Germany within three months of their elections. The reason that this law was introduced was due to Turkish politicians campaigning and gaining support for Erdogan back in April. So, Germany made it so that Erdogan couldn't campaign in Germany in front of the 1.2 million Turkish people who are eligible to vote in the Turkish elections at the end of June. Were eligible, I should say. He won the election, by the way, but that's neither here nor there. So, you can see how both the DFB, the Deutsche Fußballbund, or the governing body of German football, and just German media in general, were unhappy with the pictures of two of their players posing with Erdogan, a man who has a, shall we say, icy relationship with Germany. Now, Ozil, who was an integral part of Germany's 2014 World Cup conquering campaign, spoke at length about how the picture that he took with the president of Turkey really changed things regarding how the public perceives him, and how they took things a little too far. In his statement, he said, quote, Certain German newspapers are using my background and photo with President Erdogan as right-wing propaganda to further their political cause. Why else did they use pictures and headlines with my name as a direct explanation for defeat in Russia? He goes on to say, quote, They didn't criticize my performances. They didn't criticize the team's performances. They just criticized my Turkish ancestry and respect for my upbringing. Now, earlier in his statement, and I'll paraphrase a bit here, Ozil spoke about what it's like growing up in a Turkish household within Germany, and how his mother never allowed him to forget his roots, which you can't say is a bad thing in the slightest. He said that the picture wasn't political as many media outlets claim it was, as he was simply accepting an invitation to meet with the president, the guy running the highest office of his family's country, and he didn't see it as a meeting with political implications. They only speak about football when they meet. No matter who the president was at the time, he was meeting with them because they were the president, not because of the person or their personality, or to give him his public support. 
So, some media outlets use the photo as leverage, and I think we now sort of understand the whole Picturegate 2018 aspect involving Ozil and Erdogan. But, Ozil continued to lampoon the media and some of the people of Germany in speaking about the charitable work that he does. There's one instance where he was going to go to his old school in Gelsenkirchen following the events of the Erdogan picture, where Ozil had funded a program for one year where, quote, Immigrant children, children from poor families, and any other children can play football together and learn social rules for life. However, days before we were scheduled to go, I was abandoned by my so-called partners who no longer wanted to work with me. <sighs> That's pretty striking for partners to pull out of something that benefited kids in Germany. Ozil says that on top of the abandonment from his charitable former partners, the school informed him that they didn't want him to show up as they quote, feared the media due to the photo he took with Erdogan. So, Ozil puts on an event to benefit the kids from his hometown in Germany, and they basically told him that he was unwanted. There's other cases of his sponsors dropping him, including a mutual sponsor that looks after both him and the DFB, which dropped him from all of their pre-World Cup campaigns following the Erdogan photo. And I'll paraphrase what Ozil says here, as he also highlighted that apparently this company was singled out for having illegal and unauthorized pieces of software in their product that are potentially hazardous to German citizens and have had massive product recalls. The DFB didn't ask them to explain themselves, the media haven't slammed them or asked them for answers, and yet Ozil is put on public trial by the media for a photo with the Turkish president. And finally, in the last part of his media and sponsor section of his press release, Mesut Ozil says that much of his charity work is never given the light of day in the German media. One project in particular that he has taken part in during the last three World Cups, 2010, 2014, and 2018, as you know, was a partnership with the German charity Big Shoe, in which Ozil, who has a history with the number 23, has helped to fund 23 children in each of the last three World Cup host countries get life-changing and often life-saving medical attention and surgeries. I personally never heard about this, and Ozil highlights that in his statement, saying, quote, This for me is the most important thing that I do as a football player, yet the newspapers find no space to raise awareness about this sort of thing. For them, me being booed or taking a picture with a president is more significant than helping children get surgeries worldwide. They too have a platform to raise awareness and funds, but choose not to do so. And so that concluded the media and sponsors part of the press release. As we move on to the final part, and the biggest by far, his statements regarding the DFB themselves. Ozil pulled no punches when speaking about DFB president Reinhard Grindel, saying that he met with the president of Germany, Frank Walter Steinmeier, not the DFB or German football, the actual president of the country, to speak about the Erdogan situation alongside ALK Gundogan, explaining his family, heritage, growing up, with an immigrant family in Germany, etc. Steinmeier was apparently understanding and professional about the situation, whilst Grindel, again, Grindel is the DFB president, I know a lot of names here, Grindel was unprofessional, angered that he wasn't allowed in the meeting between Ozil Gundogan and Steinmeier, and also mad that Steinmeier and his office were taking the lead on the situation as opposed to the DFB. From the little that I've seen about him, Grindel sounds like a real piece of work, but that's me editorializing. Let's see what Ozil had to say about Grindel, and I'll paraphrase once again. Basically, following the World Cup, Grindel started to receive some heat for some of the decisions that were made by the DFB before the World Cup, as I said. And his response was to point out Ozil once again and to ask him to explain his actions regarding the Erdogan picture, blaming the play of Ozil, one player of 23 in the squad, for the poor performances and disastrous World Cup for Germany and the negative media following the Erdogan photo. Can I just refer to it as the photo from now on? Appreciate it. This is where Ozil dropped the biggest bomb of all on Grindel, as he said, quote, In the eyes of Grindel and his supporters, I am German when we win, but I am an immigrant when we lose. This, despite paying taxes in Germany, donating facilities to German schools, and winning the World Cup with Germany in 2014, I am still not accepted into society. He then went on to highlight the fact that he has received a Bambi Award for successfully integrating himself into German society, a Silver Laurel in 2014 from the Federal Republic of Germany, and he was the German football ambassador in 2015. And yet he still gets referred to as German-Turkish instead of simply German. He also highlighted that Lukas Podolski and Miroslav Klose two players that were born in Poland, were never referred to as German-Polish, as Ozil speculates that he is only seen as different because he is Turkish and Muslim. Without saying it outright, I get the vibe that he is sort of stating that because Turkey is more... What's the word here? I guess 
exotic or culturally different from Germany in comparison to Poland, the media, Grindel, and some of the public simply don't see him as German despite being born and raised within the country. When you look at Miroslav Klose in particular, it's well documented that he moved to Germany from Poland when he was eight. He knew only two words of German. However, whenever he would have a bad game for Germany, the fact that he was Polish was never brought up, nor was he a target for media attacks. Klose even admitted in 2007 that he and his wife spoke Polish to their children at home. So I think it's a fair question for Mesut Ozil to ask, what's the difference between he and I in this situation? Or he and Klose, not me. <laughs> Ozil also highlights some other politicians in Germany and their words for him. Quote, I was called by Bernd Holtzauer, a German politician, a goat f***er because of my picture. Furthermore, Werner Stier, chief of German theater, told me to piss off to Anatolia, a place in Turkey where many immigrants are based. They are no better than the German fan who told me after the match against Sweden to, Ozil, f*** off you Turkish shit, piss off you Turkish pig. Ozil also said that he didn't even want to bring up all the hate mail, threatening phone calls and social media comments that he and his family had received. He went further, highlighting that Grindel's words and actions don't surprise him, given that Grindel in 2004 claimed that multiculturalism is a myth. He voted against dual nationalities, said that Islamic culture has become too ingrained in German cities as well. So the quote that I opened with, Ozo claiming that he no longer feels pride in representing the German shirt, from his perspective, it's pretty easy to sympathize with. You were born within a country, raised within the country, do charitable work for said country, played a huge role in them winning a World Cup, and then they turn their back on you when the team does poorly and use you, as Ozil said, as, quote, political propaganda. You couldn't help but feel unwanted and extremely angry with the situation. Since then, on Monday morning, the DFB responded to Ozil's claim saying that, quote, we emphatically reject the DFB being linked to racism. The DFB has been very involved in integration work in Germany for many years. It is regrettable that Mesut Ozil felt that he had not been sufficiently protected as a target of racist slogans. However, while the DFB didn't really strike back at Ozil, Uli Hoeneß, the president of Bayern Munich, had some harsh words for Ozil, as he said, quote, I'm glad this nightmare is over. He's been playing crap for years. The last tackle he won was before the 2014 World Cup, and now he is hiding himself and his poor performances behind this photo. Damn, some cutting stuff there. And with all of that to consider, I leave the comment section open to you. And please leave the racist shit out of the comment section because that's simply unwanted and doesn't further the discussion at all. Do you stand by Ozil's decision or do you side with the sentiments of Uli Honus and think that Ozil is using the photo controversy as a distraction from his declining performances for Germany? Personally, I don't think that's what Ozil's doing at all. I look forward to chatting with you guys in the comments section and hey, if you enjoyed this video, then drop a like for me and subscribe if you're finding us for the first time and you want more content on all things football. I'm Adrian, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and I'll hopefully catch you in the next one. Take care.